Hey guys, Professor Bill, Comic Book University, and Outlawed, issue number one. I believe this is just a one-shot. This is about to break into the Champions series. Uh, wow, I did not think that Eve Ewing had it in her to do such an incredible freaking story. Um, also, I'm a little bit scared because this is an amazing story for it to be your first real, you know, pull-in for, for a great comic book series. But holy crap, she's going to do it. Honestly, my peeps, here's the thing I'm going to suggest. Could it be that we have another Donny Cates situation over here? Because look, I'm saying, I'm just saying, Ironheart was pretty good. I fell off of it. A bunch of people told me, no, you need to go back and start reading the, the you know, after you dropped off because that's where it got really good. Okay, maybe I should have. Plus, it's really great for the younger audience, or, or at least the people who are into the younger characters. Okay, we're good. New Warriors, all that stuff. We got it. We got it. I probably am going to go back and read that stuff now, specifically because this was so amazing, and I can't wait to see what's about to happen next. So here's what's about to happen. I'm going to talk about, I'm going to tell you right now that I'm splitting this into two different parts of the same video. The first half will just be me talking in general about what's happening in the comic book uh, to get you excited about the book, because you should absolutely go out and buy this comic book. And put the rest of the stuff on your poll list. Yeah, it's that good. Then, I'm going to give you a warning, and we're going to go into the full spoilers about the comic book, because holy crap, this was amazing. So yeah, this will probably be a fairly long video. That being said, first we're going to get into who made the comic book, because credit must be given to those who deserve it. So, known accomplices, according to here, um, Eve L. Ewing is the writer. Kim Jacinto on art. Uh, I'm going to apologize in advance for the pronunciation of the color artist's name, Espen Grunjern. I did the best I could. I apologize. Please do not come and kill me with a giant freaking axe. Uh, letters. VCs Clayton Cowles. Pepe Larez and David Curiel did the cover. Whole bunch of people on the very cover. And hey, Carlos Lau. You do awesome graphic design, brother. Just saying. Okay. So we start off with the boring stuff. Look, some of the best TV shows out there will start with the after the the essential aftermath of what happened and then we'll go back and start telling the whole story and once the climax happens you're like oh shoot and that is, there is an oh shoot moment in here um which you knew was coming but they keep on doing it the ewing keeps on doing it to you even the last page is like oh shoot but anyway, then it goes into why all this aftermath stuff is happening, and then continues with the aftermath. You start seeing some serious repercussions of what happened. Yeah, okay, look, I'm just saying, you need to get this comic book, bro. <laughs> this is a crazy book. Um, let's talk really quickly about the art. The art is made for kids, okay? Um, you're going to look at different aspects of the art. Some of it you're going to be like, okay, this is just kind of silly. Okay, yeah, whatever, look. Look at the way the adults are drawn and look at the way that the kids are drawn. Okay? Look at the way that these different characters are drawn and then understand why that's happening. Because this is basically a retelling of the Civil War story. Okay? Now, this could have been labeled Civil War 3. All right? I'm talking about the comic book, not the American version. Okay? The comic book version of the Civil War. All right? One of the main comic books of yesteryear in Marvel that just, you know, hey, Marvel's going back on the map and we are the contenders from this point on. Bring the noise, you know? Um, as far as everything else in it, this, this really could have been called Civil War Three, except it would have had the baggage on it of Civil War Two. So I am glad there's a different name on this, but understand that's exactly what this is. Ewing is doing an amazing job of taking this char the, these characters... Uh, and applying the exact same situation that happened in Civil War, but to them, all right? So you think about the, the catalyst for the Civil War. It was the bus. It was uh, Connecticut, uh, Stanford, Connecticut, I think it was, where um, the New Warriors were doing their thing, and they were just being a bunch of dumb kids. They weren't taking things seriously, and all of a sudden, Nitro shows up, and he was somebody who should have been taken seriously, after all, he's essentially what uh, wound up leading to the death of Captain Marvel, the original. I'm just saying, well, the original in Marvel. Uh, Marvel. So, yeah. This really shouldn't work. When you take down the brass tacks of what happened in this comic book, this comic book simply should not work. It shouldn't. There's no reason why it should. Because it's just a retelling, but in a different time and with different stories. Yeah. 
Except that when you do look at the Civil War, how adult heroes had to be punished for the actions of some dumb kids, it's, you know, you can look on the surface of that and say the, the, the wrong battle was being fought. This is the battle that actually should have been fought. And Eve Ewing is now correcting that. This is not a back-in-time story. Don't let the way that I'm giving the narrative um, dissuade you in understanding. This is a modern, relevant, right-now story, like in the current timeline of the Marvel Universe. But it's obvious that she drew inspiration and ideas from back then, and she's rewriting the story, or at least doing it a different way. But, yeah, modern day. Not with those original characters, per se. Although a lot of them do show up. Look at the names that are mentioned for who's on the task force in here. Um, some characters are just like, oh, they're not really a big deal. They're no-name characters. You know, not no-name. All these characters have existed before. But you look at who's being put on this team, and all of a sudden, oh, crap, are you freaking kidding me right now? Look, this comic book continues to surprise me. There's some certain parts in here where it's like, okay, this is weird. Like, can you just get to the part? Because there was a lot of anticipation. If you get anxiety, you're probably going to skip to the end of the comic book. May I make the suggestion? Please wait. Please just wait. Because it's only going to give you more anxiety when you wonder, well, how to get to there. And at the end of the day, it's worth reading it from beginning to end. Legit. Just read this comic book from the first page to the last page. Don't skip. You're going to want to skip at certain points. Don't do it. The anticipation is built for a reason. And the last page, I can assure you, is not going to tell you what happened before. Not the way that you think. And it's going to ruin some stuff. You're going to be looking at the, the ending in a different way. Eve has you focusing on one ending. And then she gives you a different ending, which is like a big F you. Bet you can't wait to read the next issue. And oh, you're right. You're 100% right. This is a freaking fantastic book. You need to go out and get this comic book, especially if you you know you like some of the younger uh, characters in the Marvel Universe. But if you're a younger reader, you're going to flip out at how good comic books can be. Listen, if this is the if you're trying to get a kid hooked on comic books, a kid. I mean, I'm 44. What the hell's a kid? Everybody who's like in their 30s or younger is a freaking kid to me, practically. Well, at the very least, in their 20s. You're all kids. Shut up. All right, get off my lawn. I'm joking. Um, I'm looking at this comic book and I'm saying that, yes, anybody who is in their teens or younger, maybe 25 or younger, you are going to freaking love this comic book. There are facts in this comic book, scientific facts that I talk about all the time. Hey, finally, somebody's talking about them here in the comic book. It's about damn time, right? This is an awesome book. And I think that for the most part, I think that if you can just read this and just enjoy it for the story as it is, it's an amazing story. This is heavily story driven. Holy crap. Holy crap. I can't wait to see how this ends. But I'm so totally down for just reading it straight through. And, and, and this is a pretty exciting moment where it's like, I'm reading it now, issue by issue, floppy by floppy. The people who are going to, you know, oh, I'm just going to grab the trade paperback later on. That's on you, bruh. That's on you. I don't see any new characters being introduced in this comic book. There's just regular old... Well, there are some, but I don't know how important they're going to be. Who cares? It's the idea that this is story-driven for me. You want to grab this because it's a first issue? Do it. You want to grab this because, you know, you're speculating, well, some of these characters could wind up turning out to be like a Henry Peter Gyrich at some point later on, um, uh, a Trask at some point later on? Yes, that absolutely could happen. I don't put anything past Ewing after this freaking issue. Holy crap. But, speculation or not, this is a story-driven comic book. Heavily story-driven. And if you don't know anything about the history of the Marvel Universe or the Civil War, you're going to be okay with this. And if you do, you're probably going to be really engaged with this. Just because of the history of what they're doing and the almost feels like a rewrite. But it's clearly not. My peeps, just get this comic book. This is one of those issues that's for everybody. And the point I was leading up to is that you can undeniably get this comic book for the peeps who want to get into comic books, but they don't know where to start. I got your first ever comic book right here. I'm not exaggerating when I say that. Damn, this is good. Okay, from this point on, I'm going to go into some spoilers. So I understand if a bunch of people want to leave, it's cool. But hey, you know, turn your phone this way and just hit that like button really quick because I appreciate that. And maybe consider sharing this uh, video with a fan. 
because they always have the option to not look at the rest of this also. But feel free to come back after you've read the comic book, because holy crap, dude, this is worth it. Okay, spoiler time. So, if you're still with me, probably half or less of the audience, but whatever, I love the way that Ewing handles some of these characters. Look at, look at Steve Rogers here. He makes a point, and he's the one person who's talking, and nobody's talking back to him. The lawyer, you know what I'm saying? The, the prosecution, they're not talking back to him, because you can't do that with Captain America. Ewing recognized that. She was smart enough to recognize that, and she said, if we screw up Captain America in this, that's it, we're done. Because the key to the Civil War happening was the way that they handled Captain America. If Mariah Hill actually had a sensible head on her shoulders and wasn't an absolute jackass, the Civil War never would have happened. If she could have simply said, Cap, we can't do this without you. Boom. But instead she turned guns on him and it's like, well, you're a freaking idiot. Now, of course, he's good. Now you just made him a fugitive also. You literally screwed this up as much as you possibly could. Now he's running for his life because he's not going to just cave to fascists. And that's exactly what Maria Hill was being. Mind you, I'm not one of these jackass comic skaters. I don't just go around throwing that term out, you know, willy-nilly. No, she straight up was, was using fascist techniques. You're either with me or you're against me. And that's just the way it was. So... Yeah. Um, so she gets, she literally just, I'm sure we're going to see Captain America at some point uh, or another later. Cool. It is what it is. But having Cap up there and not having anybody go against him and just say, oh, oh okay, Cap's good. We got to take an L on this one. We can go back against every single one of these people here, but we can't bad math. We, we can't say anything antithesis to Cap. We just got to take that loss. He was there. He said what he had to say. We let it go. So now it looks like it's a fair trial, right? At the same time, whose side are you going to be on in this? Because you can legitimately look at this in so many different ways. Are you just going to look at this as a comic book fan? We're like, no, we need the champions and all these other little, you know, characters and whatnot. But let's also look at real life. Would we really put these guys in line? Maybe it's not fair to call them child soldiers because they are doing this freely of their own free will, right? But at the same time, we do have a problem with, you know, people 17 years old. I was one of those kids who were being brought up and sent over into the military and whatnot. Not allowed to get a beer. You know what I'm saying? You're, you're not allowed to, um, you're not allowed to do a lot of things, you know what I'm saying? And all of a sudden you're, you're allowed to go over and you're allowed to start killing people. And you just, I, it's, dude, it's, it's the weirdest freaking thing, right? So we do have to make some, uh, it's understandable that it's the opposition who's going to talk about uh, the comparison between these, the champions and all these younger heroes and uh, child soldiers. It makes perfect sense that they would make that argument. You have to put that in context again. You know, by all means, feel free to go and check out my uh, comic book courtroom cases that I've done. Uh, just look up comic book courtroom, comic book university, boom, you'll find the two that have already been done. There are more on the way. I can assure you of that. But man, you, when you actually start to think a thought all the way through and really start to look at the defenses that each team has and the accusations they're going to make against the other side, it really helps out. And that's what you get to see here. You get to see an actual courtroom case happening where these guys are in trouble. All of a sudden you go back and you see what's going on. Now, um, Greta Thunberg, she's obviously used in here. There's a different character in here. I Honestly, I wouldn't have minded seeing Greta in here. I think that would have actually been really cool to see the first comic book appearance of Greta, as opposed to in one of those other comic books, you know, they're just going to be silly and whatnot. Marvel really could have done that in here, you know what I'm saying? But they decided to use somebody else instead. Okay, whatever. Um, it is what it is. Um, <clears throat> but this is clearly a Greta Thunberg character who is worried about, you know, conservation, saving the planet, stop, you know, even though climate change isn't necessarily the big, you know, issue here, just she's trying to stop waste and pollution and things like that. And she's a, she's an advocate. She's only 16 years old. Mm. And uh, yeah, there you go. And the champions have been going around trying to protect her because there've been a lot of online rumors about them being killed. Okay, great uh, response back to the idea that Jim Zub and Mark Wade made it so that these are the online soldiers. You know what I'm saying? They they interact with people online. They use social media, you know, to the best of their ability um, to, to, to put out the, the messages that they want, the message of positivity, and to also... Um, what do you call it, to find out what's going on. So they're, they're, they're sending, they're receiving all of this in social media. 
and that's being used here also. Excellent use of that Ewing without overdoing it in any way, shape, or form. So the champions are out, they're doing their thing, they're trying to set up perimeters, all of a sudden an effing dragon shows up. What? Yeah. An effing dragon shows up. It looks like Godzilla, you know, had sex with Rodan. Wow, that's freaking weird. Anyway, he just shows up. And, they're, and, and this doesn't even seem to be the big deal right now, but I'm sure that... We, pay attention to what happens in here, because I'm sure this is going to come back later on, that this whole setup and whatnot. But there's, you know, you have to have the Stanford... Yeah, the Stanford, Connecticut bus incident, right? The Nitro incident. What's that incident? Well, this is a little bit more personal, because they're going after this dragon, and unfortunately these are kids, and they are impulsive, as is mentioned in the beginning of this comic book. They are impulsive. And something happens where Riri winds up getting herself screwed up and she overpowers somehow. It's the weirdest freaking thing. I'm sure that something's going to come back to how this happened exactly, but people were hurt. There was a lot of destruction. Um, may have been some people killed. But, yeah, this was a really bad situation here. And the champions had to stop one of their own. The champions had to stop uh, Viv Vision from going nuclear, essentially, right? Um, we don't know what exactly it is that happened here, but it's going to come, it's clearly got to come back because you saw her shoot at Riri. She took a shot at Riri when Riri was trying to help her. Okay, something happened here. Anyway, what the heck did Roxon do? Was it actually Roxon? So, um, there winds up being an explosion and... Uh, these guys are all on trial now, and they're like, okay, listen, the idea is not to necessarily stop all vigilantes, because we've already done that before, but maybe we should simply, you know, form this new group, and it's got to be, a, if it's going to be a cool group, you got to have a cool name. So they're going to make this organization called Cradle, and explain what it's called in here, you know, why, you know what the acronym actually stands for in here. Um, and with this group, they're going to go around, they're going to start rounding up, basically, all of the, they're, they're coming for you. They're going to start rounding up all these child um, superheroes, child, children with power, and try and put them together. Who's the main person that's on here? Now, it doesn't seem to be in charge or anything like that, but clearly a figurehead in all of this. They've got Speedball. Yep, you knew it had to happen. You knew it had to happen because he was the one who suffered the most. You wanted becoming penance. That very quickly got disappeared. That's a shame because I think that could have worked really well. But it is what it is, you know? Um, they got speedball in this. Okay. All right. That's honestly, that's a way to do it. Have him be the biggest, uh, have him be the one that needs to be swayed. Make speedball relevant again. Seriously. Why not? Um, heck the most relevant he's been in forever has been in the, um, old man quill. I think it was the old man quill books. <laughs> right. But, um, maybe it was old man Hawkeye. I think it was Old Man Hawkeye. Anyway, one of those Old Men books. The Wasteland books. So anyway, um, yeah, in order to try and save this person, um, all sorts of crazy worse things happen. And oh look, here's uh, here's what happens to Riri. She overloads and people start getting hurt. Now, it's really messed up. Like, it's not just this dragon. You can tell there's a whole conspiracy thing because they see a bunch of, uh, like, there's some humor in here. Looking down, you know, from this rooftop, oh, hey, here's some armed people. Maybe they're here to help us against the dragon. Hey, guys, we're trying to rally some efforts over here. Oh, there's the champions. We were told to shoot on sight. Boo, 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 boo. Uh, all of a sudden, it's like, oh, nope, they're the bad guys. They're with the dragon. They're back up for the dragon. Dude, I, that was great. I love that. Did you like my little milking the cow thing over here? I actually know how to milk a cow. Anyway, um, dude, this was, <laughs> this was freaking wicked. I loved how good this comic book was. At the end. No, I'm not going to do it to you. I know I said it's going to be spoilers. I didn't say I'm going to spoil everything. I'm not going to tell you what happens at the end. That's on you. All right? This was... An amazing issue, a freaking amazing issue, where I think that you're generally going to love everything, everything that happens inside of this comic book. My peeps, I'm not joking when I say, if you're trying to get somebody hooked on comics and they're age 25 or younger, I'm not guaranteeing anything. It's just some advice. All right, get the book. Because damn, it's awesome. Damn, it is awesome. Forget about speculation for once. Stop it. 
Nah. But of course, if this does turn out to be one of those amazing storylines, which it looks like it will, of course, this is going to be the, 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 the preempt to it. All right. This is the prelude to it. Got to have it. This is where the, the main story happens. Boom. Grab it. Right. But this is story driven. Get it for the story. Look at what the art is. Look at what Jacinto is actually doing with the art. Enjoy this comic book. And also, one last thing. Watch a freaking ad if it shows up at the end of this. Just let the ad play and go look at another video someplace else. Because for crying out loud, for the love of God, that's how we get paid. All right? And I'm trying to provide extra content this week. Uh, actually, for the next month or so. Because of the whole uh, coronavirus thing. Which, bad name for it. The COVID-19 um, disease that's out there. So, yeah. Let's <laughs> try and help you guys out. Try and help me out and simply let an ad play. That's all I'm asking. And I'm out. Professor Bill, Comic Book University. Class dismissed.